Today I'm going to talk to you about how you come out with the perfect settings when doing landscape photography. My name is Toma, Photo Tom here on YouTube and this channel is all about landscape and travel photography. So if you're interested in this kind of topics, make sure to subscribe for more similar videos. And also if you're interested in my instructional videos on editing, you can find a link in the description of this video and find all the information there. When I talk about the perfect settings for landscape photography, I'm not talking about giving you one setting, one combination of exposure, ISO and aperture that will work every, uh, every time. What I want is to give you a set of tips and suggestions on how you find the perfect exposure. First of all, the exposure is determined by the exposure time, the ISO and the aperture. Let's talk about the ISO. Usually you would want to have an ISO of 100 because you will have less noise in your photo. But there are situations when you need to boost the ISO. And for example, those situations are when you have some movement in the leaves, for example, and you want to freeze uh, that motion. So you increase the ISO value. Another situation is when you're doing a really long exposure and it's too long and you want to make it shorter a little bit, so you boost the ISO. There is no problem in raising the ISO, especially with the newer uh, cameras. I think you can easily, easily go to ISO 640 and you have, uh, I think, uh, almost no noise in your photo. Now let's talk about the aperture. The smaller the aperture, the bigger the depth of field. And this means that uh, when you want to have everything in focus, you close your aperture, you raise that number, f, 8, 11, 16, 22, okay? Usually you will photograph at f8 or f11, it depends on uh, which value your lens is the sharpest. You just, uh, you just take two photos at f8, f11, you go home, you look at those photos for an hour and then you decide which one is sharper and that is the aperture that you're going to use. Now don't be afraid to go above this, uh, this value, don't be afraid to go to f16 or f22, even higher if it's necessary. Uh, some people talk about diffraction, I think diffraction is real, <laughs> it exists, but it's not a problem uh, with the, the modern day sensors. I mean the photo is still sharp and you can still uh, go and sharpen your photo more in post-processing. Now when you would want to increase uh, or uh, have a, a really small aperture. Well, for example, when you're doing uh, uh, a waterfall photo, you want that silky look, you don't have an ND filter, you have only a polarizer, and the light is still powerful. Then you uh, make your aperture smaller, you go to f16, you go to f22. No problem uh, with this. Uh, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that when your aperture is smaller, this means a higher number, uh, as I said, F16, F22, okay, the depth of field increases. So another situation uh, when you would want to use a really uh, small aperture is when the focus point is really close to your camera and you still want everything in focus. At a certain point, you won't be able to do this in one shot. Even if you go to F22, um, you will need to do focus stacking. But for most of the cases, this will do the trick. And now you also have uh, the exposure time that determines how much light uh, enters uh, and uh, affects the sensor. Now, when you're doing this, uh, these three settings, exposure time, ISO and aperture, before you think about these settings, you think about what you want to photograph. What is your subject? What is your point of focus? And let me explain why. First, you need to identify the subject. You need to ask yourself, what am I photographing here? What is the subject? What is the point of focus? Why? Because when you have decided on what is the element of focus, uh, the, the centerpiece of your photo, then you will want that element to have the highest brightness and the biggest contrast. You don't want other elements in the shot that could compete uh, for attention with your subject. And at this point, it becomes very easy to decide your exposure because your subject is going to be the brightest element in the scene. So you expose for the subject, 
you make sure the subject is in focus and the rest of the photo will be of course in a slight darkness. What you want to avoid when setting your exposure is having complete black uh, shadows. You need some details in the shadows. Also don't have blown highlights but if your subject is the brightest element in the scene then you will have no problem with that because you're going to expose for the subject. Now make sure the difference in stops of light between the subject and the shadows uh, it's not that big uh, and you end up with uh, completely black shadows. At this point I think it's pretty obvious and clear how you plan your exposure. So first of all you identify your subject and then you plan your exposure. What is the aperture you need to have that uh, subject in clear? How big your depth of field you want to be? Uh, what ISO you need if it's okay with ISO 100 or you need to increase it and the exposure time needs to be uh, adjusted so that it fits your purpose. If you have leaves that are moving and don't want to capture them move, moving then you need a short exposure time and maybe you need to raise the ISO or open the aperture some more. Um, so um, if you have other questions just use the comment section below. Please don't forget to share this video uh, on your social media. Maybe there are other photographers that are struggling with this and I think um, learning how you plan your perfect exposure it's much more important than uh, thinking uh, uh, about a set of settings that you could apply in all situations. So until next time keep on photographing because it's the only way uh, to get better. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.